face. It is Freaky Friday, Menace Army. Friday, February 23rd, live at noon. And there's a lot of sh- a lot of shit a brewing. I saw on Twitter, Nevada Buck put out Ward Manual is about to be out. And then I've started, I guess, reading into what he, I guess, potentially could have done, could have covered up. And the Michigan board is not too thrilled with the fat fuck. What's the name? Kingpin? Kingpin. Kingpin. It's about time for you to face the music, my friend, because I can hear it. It's faint. It's in the distance. But there's motherfucking music playing. And it's time he faces the music. And this could be an epic, epic situation. For the school up north, you have to. Th- and I don't want to spoil the whole segment because we'll get to it. But <laughs> I, mean, I just, it's like when, when I heard about it last night, I saw that the Buckeye Scoop did a show on it. And then it, this is not just Buckeye Scoop, they certainly broke it, but this is spread uh, w- like wildfire. And everyone's talking about it, you know, behind closed doors, all your little secret societies. I texted my Michigan guy today about this, about the award stuff, and I yeah. got a uh, execute order 66, like the Star Wars <laughs> meme back. Like, oh, okay. All right. But you got to think, they were going to have a a slight dip, even Mm -hmm. if they came out smelling like roses. Sharon Moore taking over, lost all their coaches. You know, there was going to be a slight dip in production. Losing 44 seniors, Harbaugh and the staff. You would assume, logic would tell you, there would be some form of dip in production. Now, oh buddy, if all this shit is true, say hello to my little friend. This is Michigan State 2.0 without without the scandal. The fall off Michigan State had. Oh, okay. That's what will happen. Think about it. Where Michigan State was, beat Ohio State, went to the playoffs. Where they are now, it's like, what the fuck happened in East Lansing? (laughs) In about three years, you're going to be like, damn. Went from 15-0 in a natty. What the hell happened in Hoarsville, Ann Arbor? Oh, I'm excited for today's show, Chris. Yeah, I can tell. It is a Super Chat Friday. It's a Freaky Friday. We're going to get our freak on. I'm staying at Bridge Park in a hotel for the whole weekend. Are you really? Fucking A right. I I wanted to tell you on air. Hey, it's my 40th celebration, right? I Mm. I had my family time, a volleyball tournament all weekend, dropped a bag just on fucking like omelets and shit because you ever fed six people in a hotel, Chris? I know you haven't. It is definitely, definitely haven't. It's a fortune, a fortune. Like, every meal is like $170. Jeez. Yeah. And you're downtown, so it's not like there's, like, cheaper options. But anyways, had my family time. Now it's time for a little de- degeneracy. So that's that's the vibe that Mama and I are on this weekend. What was the gym this morning? Oh, fucking killer. We killed it. Back squat. It was all, all lower body. Um, it's really cool because I do 20-minute cardio, and I switched it up. I've done some sprint cardio. Um, I've done some walk runs. And the last, like, week or so, I've just been doing – Two mile runs, just trying to trying to knock it out, and I've got two miles under nineteen minutes, like in, like I'm in, in my sleep, just straight to which you know hate on it if you want to, but it's progress. I'm, my goal is to hit uh, a five k in under twenty two minutes before summer, so that's like a, about a seven minute mile. Um, it's a bitch, but I'm gonna get there. I'm gonna get there. So the gym's gym's popping. The wor- workouts are on. I actually got called out today by a Menace Army member at the gym. He was like, "I'm glad you're here." Because you talk all that shit on your show that you're working out. I'm glad to see you here. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, I'm in here. I'm really in here. So we got a lot to talk about, though. So much shit. Michigan AD might get fired. How you feeling, Buckeyes? OH. In the chat, give me an IO. I think everybody's probably thrilled. But we'll get Michigan, to when we get to Michigan, there, yeah. yeah. What are we talking about? <laughs> this is the one time that Ohio State and Michigan fans will all be celebrating. Because Michigan fans hate that fat motherfucker. But, Lukey, let them know what time it is, Bubba. <laughs> Let's get to the show. You know, I got to open the show with the fucked up stuff, bro. I don't know if you saw, but uh, but Antonio Brown is suing. He announced he's suing AB for $10 million. Who the fuck is AB? Antonio Brown. He's suing himself? Yeah. What? <laughs> How? CTE is a superpower. But like he, I don't know if he has CTE or if he's just a complete fucking whack job, but he sure likes to talk about he has CTE. He tweeted after they broke legendary NFL wide receiver Antonio Brown announced he is suing Antonio Brown for $10 million. And a, Antonio Brown quote tweeted it and said, I'm suing the CTE out of him. Like, what? Hey, somebody check on, buddy. But we knew he was fucked up, right? 
I mean, taking his dick out in a public pool. Yeah, bro, like, in the all this shit. In a hotel pool. Like a hotel pool. Like, I'm a degenerate. I wouldn't even do that unless we were alone. Like, if there's people there, I'm not whipping my meat out. What is that? He, he does some outlandish shit. I, they need to check on him. Bro, him saying he's going to sue the CTE out of himself is the most insane shit I've ever read. What's up with Buddy? I think I think he just has has some just screws loose. I don't know that it's CTE. Maybe it is CTE. We we'll, we won't we can't find out until he until um hopefully a long time from now he passes away at the ripe old age of like eighty nine. Yeah. Let's hope it's not trending that direction, yeah, but I we're mean, hopeful. His brain's gonna hit the auction when it's time. Oh, buddy, like hey, there's no doubt. Like his no, but he'll brain... do some outlandish shit. Like he won't even let them use it. He'll donate it to like some fucking like sharks or something. Like it'll be he'll do something fucking outlandish. He'll donate it to AB. Yeah, right. Um, I don't know if you saw, you know, the, the sports memorabilia world is wild. So um, the other day, a whole bunch of Adrian Peterson's stuff went up. His MVP, his rookie yeah. of the year, um, and more in an estate sale. And then he came out and said, I, I'm I'm not poor. Like, I have money. Yeah. I reached out to the auction house. I want my stuff back. And I guess he wasn't selling it. Zach, have you, have you heard of this before? Like, how, the, how did they get it then? I don't, I don't know. That's that's bizarre. An estate sale. I don't know if it's super you, bizarre. Usually estate sales happen when you get divorced mm -hmm. or you die or, you know, or you go bankrupt, which if he's not broke, not getting divorced and clearly not dead. I don't know how that happens. Yeah, he said it was uh, it took place without his permission. And he said he's financially stable and would never sell off any of his hard earned trophies. See, but the, the, athletes can get in trouble with this, right? They're so busy being pro athletes that they end up giving someone the power of attorney to, to execute all their stuff, right? So they, they can execute trades and finances and all this stuff. And then someone can fuck you over. Yeah. And you signed over your power of attorney to someone. I would never do that. I mean, obviously, unless I was like ailing mentally or physically, like if I'm physically fit, mentally fit, I will make the decisions. Thank you. I get they're busy, but how could you be more busy than taking care of you, yourself and your family? But I, that had to be what happened. I don't know the details. That sounds like it's what happened, though. I don't know what I would do if I was a famous athlete and I get online one day and I see all my awards on an estate sale. Bro, like, it, what's even the course of action? I, there's nothing you do. Um, I don't think. I mean, he'll have to fight the power of attorney in court. But it, buy it back. Something like that happened to me. I mean, I didn't have anything of value in it, but I had a storage unit when I was coaching. Then I got fired. Shit went crazy, and I just completely forgot about it. And they never, like, called me. Um, they might have sent me letters. I don't know. I don't. I, I, maybe I wasn't good at mail. Mm -hmm. But then one day, somebody posted on eBay like a my grandfather's book that was autographed. I have like a hundred, and they were like from Zach Smith's uh, uh, storage facility, auto autographed copy of Earl Bruce's book. And I was like, I've got literally fifty more. Do you? I mean, I'll give them away. Like, I'm, <laughs> it was just it's bizarre. It happens. That reminds me, Mozzie Smith. Oh, I don't know buddy. if you saw. Wild storage unit, Pat. If you want to play the video, it is above Luke. And the craziest storage units I've ever purchased. I paid eighteen hundred and eighty dollars for this storage locker. I'm guessing because most people saw this giant gun safe in the front, but what I saw was this cleat in the back, and it's a Michigan Jordan cleat. These are player exclusive cleats. They sell for between six and seven hundred dollars, and that was just the tip of the iceberg for this unit. All of the shoes in here are essentially player exclusive Michigan Wolverine Jordan shoes. Cleats, player exclusive, just regular shoes, training shoes. It's just insane. The unit also had about three or four boxes filled with Mega Block Halo Legos. This is a Louis Vuitton toiletry bag that sells for like a thousand dollars. Here's another Lego set. This is a Michigan playbook. Sealed Super Smash Bros. game, some game-worn Jordan 13 cleats. The player did get drafted in the first round of 2023. There will be a part two and three to this because part two are the crazy shoes that I haven't even shown you yet. And part three will be some of the clothes because the clothes are high-end as well. The last will be us finally opening the safe because I have to figure out how to get into that thing. Talk about just being unbelievably lucky. I'm sorry I couldn't get it all in one video. You're definitely going to want to follow because what's in this box is more than I could have ever imagined. Hey, I might get into that. That's sweet. 
buying like like foreclosed storage units because it happened to me. I get it. I know how it happens. Mm -hmm. And thank God, I mean, by complete random, because I had a bunch of shit in there. And the summer before I got fired for no reason, no like premonition, like I cleaned out and got everything that I really like valued and brought it to my basement. I was like, I need to start going through this stuff. And then like six months later, gone. And I'm like, damn, what if I left all that shit? Yeah. I mean, you're talking about like, like he said, playbooks. I mean, you know, 12 years of a career. I don't need those old playbooks. Put them in storage. I'll, I'll go through them when I want to go through them. But that's wild. Wild. It, it is wild. And I don't know if you, if you listen to what he said at the beginning of the video or kind of what he maybe elaborated later, but he said the, the unit usually doesn't go for over a thousand dollars, but there was that gun safe yeah. when they opened it up that everybody saw. And so people were going crazy on that talk to you remember was, I was probably, say, yeah i was gonna say like that's convenient <laughs> mozzie smith had a gun case a gun safe yeah because he had a, he also, he also had, had a gun charge yeah. by the way <laughs> yeah I, I need to see what's in the safe i need to see what he's what, what he's packing like what's he got in there me too and i need that safe i got a little safe I, I gotta get a big one for when i start getting long 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 guns yeah like mozzie smith just got his first gun or whatever i guess it was right on time that 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 thing happened but he's got the fucking biggest gun safe there is yeah i don't know um i you know i'm, I'm sure he's not gonna be missing too much of that stuff but a lot of stuff was kind of cool like all the player edition like cleats and shit like that yeah that stuff i mean goes crazy mm -hmm. and and you i mean see, i know about the pe stuff yeah know. chris knows all know about it shit i told chris i have uh they gave us a pair of look what are they lebron basketball yeah. shoes when they maybe when they first came out of the second edition and they gave them to the whole team the staff and yeah. i have them i, I think i pe brawn 11s i think or yeah 12s. whatever it was i wore them one time and they just sit in my closet and chris was like yo if you want me to sell those for you i like yeah. my buddy so and so will buy them right now and i was like I, I never even heard of it i was like what do you mean buy them like they're just shoes he's like bro those are player edition like you can make a shitload of money if you sold those absolutely i mean I, the estimate for that mozzie smith thing was like probably twenty thousand dollars in pe's yeah. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. 20K in play. So PEs are player edition shoes, meaning they like, they, no one, they're not for yeah. sale anywhere. The yeah. only people in the world that got them were the players. And these players, they do. I mean, we saw Austin Mack did it the other day. Mm -hmm. Just was get, try, try, trying to get rid of a bunch of shit. Like, I don't need all this stuff. Like, I'll keep the stuff. I did it. I had probably like 10 jerseys. What the fuck do I want these jerseys for? So I sold them. The only ones I kept were the one Devin Smith signed and sent me Michael, like the ones that had value to me personally, I kept, right. But like, I had like six helmets. What the fuck do I want a Buckeye helmet for? I don't plenty of Buckeyes do. So I was like, I'll sell them. And I did shit. It helped fund half of this fucking company. So I, I think it's crazy that he just let it like foreclose. But I'm, and, I'm sure he just didn't realize it. Yeah. It's what happens, it. right? You yeah. get busy. They go to the NFL. It's back in Ann Arbor. It's like, fuck, I'm not going to be back in Ann Arbor for but usually you just keep paying it until you can get back. He's mm -hmm. got the money, but wild. So there's like this operation that goes down every year in Akron or right around the time. Like everybody's waiting for the date that uh, the St. V basketball players get their LeBron St. V editions. Yeah, yeah. And then it's like, it's like a chase to see who can buy the most pairs. Cause it's only, only varsity gets them. So it's like yeah. 12 home pairs, 12 away pairs. And you got to like go find the kids that were like the, <laughs> the money sizes. It's just a fucking process. It's crazy. Process. It's a whole different world. It's, it's honestly like bourbon. Yeah, Shoes remind me of bourbon. It. That's a good way to put it. Like fucking waiting outside on a Saturday morning and all this shit. And then like buying aftermarket for like crazy prices. Like it's just, it's just a wild world. It's, mm -hmm. it's a cult. It is really a cult. I, uh, I bought a pair off the, at the time was the number one player in Ohio at this gas station and not a good part of town. I drove there. It was like 11 PM. Didn't, didn't even realize who it was. And like, because it's dark and he had a, a hoodie on and a, and a, and a hat and I'm with my guy and I was like I was like oh like these are perfect da, da, da. and I was like do you start he looked at me <laughs> and I was like oh you're you're sincere Harris <laughs> yeah you absolutely do and then now he plays he plays at Illinois so I, I got his I got his pair that I quickly sold um, <laughs> flipped them actually that never happened because I think that might be a violation well it is what it is. It's out there now. It never happened. Um, I don't know if you saw, but Chad Powers is about to get a um, a, a TV show. You know Chad Powers. Oh, yeah. Eli Manning yeah. at Penn State, right? Yeah. So they're going to do a show based on that skit. Mm-hmm. Well, Chalk It Up is another show that I absolutely will not fucking watch. It's not going to be very funny, dog. I, I feel like the, the original skit comedy was because Eli Manning is, like, not a good-looking dude. Yeah. And then they went and got a fucking great looking dude. But it was, and it was funny because like 
the coaches didn't know, but they were actual coaches, and it was Eli fucking Manning. Like, this is going to be an actor. It's going to be stupid. To me, the concept is stupid. Shout out Omaha Productions for ESPN, though. Really bringing us the bangers we want. We literally just want good sports coverage. Like, just give us good sports coverage. Like, ballers, shows like that. Like, show us, like, the real side of the NFL. Cocaine, hookers, mm -hmm. like, jersey chasers. That shit's awesome. Like, Chad Powers? Are you fucking serious? Hey, ESPN. Great job. Yeah, give us more 30 for 30s. No, don't give a shit. Just keep doing a shitty job so people tune in to us. That's actually a great idea. Um, the Chiefs, they signed Matt Ariza, the punter that uh, remember faced the rape allegation. Yeah, the rapist. Great, great. Except he wasn't there. The yeah. first man in the history of the world to rape a girl without ever being there. Uh, I take that back. Mel Tucker kind of did. <laughs> That's right. Wow. I always forget about Mel. But no, Matt Ariza, remember, he, he got exonerated, and then the NFL still wouldn't touch him, even though, yeah. you know, statistically, he's one of the three best punters in college football history. And – they waited till after the season ended. Right. We're going to sign. Hey, you out. know what? Good for him, though. Mm -hmm. Give him an opportunity. Second chance at a career. Um, still, it's absolutely, absolutely criminal that the girl is not facing charges. Um, I believe that if someone rapes someone, you should fucking shoot them, shoot them right in the head. I, if they actually like physically took a woman against her will, they should just be fucking executed. That's what I believe. You don't have to agree. That's fine. But if a woman falsely accuses a man like this i'm talking not like gray area consent like she was drunk and they hooked up no no no. i'm talking about wasn't even in the house when she said he did it wasn't even there was it at the party she should get thrown in fucking jail yeah yeah and it was really shitty kind of the timing of it because he just got drafted yeah obviously it was a money grab she went on like a media tour her lawyers were talking to every network and before the case even got started he got got blackballed from everything and cut um, all for it to be not true. Yeah, and he missed out on what the last two or three years in terms of NFL paychecks. Two years, yeah, yeah, because that because he punted for uh, San Diego State, I think, in twenty twenty, and had a, rid a ridiculous, ridiculous year. So, um, de definitely shitty. But I, I am glad that the Chiefs signed him, and I hope that he, he gets an actual shot, not just like a PR stunt shot. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Um. All right, J.K. Dobbins, dog. He's been – or not J.K. Dobbins, excuse me. Blake Corum. Has Same been, guy. Yes, has been getting Same talked guy. about a lot. You know, he started getting mocked in the second round of some drafts, and the comp for him has been um, J.K. Dobbins. I've seen it about three times from, uh, from from NFL scout guys. And I wanted to ask you first about the value of Blake Corum, and do you think uh, J.K. Dobbins' comp is good for him? Um the value of Blake? Yeah. I, I, th I think he has great value. I think he's going to be a good NFL back. Um, you have to think about it. What Blake Corum lacks is that home run speed. And the NFL is not really a home run league for the most part, right? How many backs in the NFL right now would you say, oh, that fucker has the speed to take it 80? Like by one? Yeah, like a couple. So I think Blake Corum is, is a phenomenal prospect for the NFL because I think he he's extremely strong, has great vision has really, really good, like, change of direction. Like, his acceleration is is really good, but they, the J.K. Dobbins comp is terrible. The only thing they have similar is their similar change of direction, right? Their jump cuts and their that when they put their foot in the ground, kind of similar. I see that. But everything else, Blake Corum is a fucking bowling ball. Yeah. J.K. Dobbins is not. J.K. Dobbins is a home run threat. Blake Corum is not. Like, the things that Blake does really well are kind of JK's weaknesses. Like a short and, yardage merchant. Yeah. Like it, okay, it's fucking third and two, and you got to go drive your legs and fucking just be a grown man and get a first down. That ain't JK. He's getting hit and it's 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 a wrap. Now he might make you miss. Mm -hmm. Now, and then also JK was a home run hitter his last year at Ohio State, and he's he's just got more bursts. He, he's he's a faster player. So I, I don't like the comp at all. I think. I think Blake has incredible NFL value. I'm not diminishing Blake Corum. I just don't think he's like J.K. at all. Also, I don't think he was as good as J.K. was in college. No. If, if I'm, you know, and I know people probably hate, hate to hear that, but I don't think he was even really close. I mean, what J.K. was able to do, you know, yardage-wise, you know, averaging 6.7 yards per carry, I think he had 2,000 yards, yeah. um, which was as much as Jonathan Taylor that year. Um, the home run hitting was massive. Um, didn't really catch the ball great, but, I mean, he was – he was a 2,000 yard back on an offense that had a, a guy that had 600 yards rushing, Zach, and a guy that had 800 yards rushing. Mm -hmm. Think about that. 
Yeah. They had a thousand yard back and then another thousand or two thousand yard back and then another thousand yard back. I I just think I just think JK was better. Um Travion Henderson was better than Blake Corum this year. Like, I don't know what we're talking about. Okay. Yeah. I, just because they hand him the ball on the two yard line every fucking time and he scored twenty seven touchdowns doesn't mean he's better. It, I, it, he do, it doesn't. So Blake Corum averaged 4.8 yards per carry, 1,200 yard back on 258 fucking carries. The most carries in the conference, right? Go back to JK, which was what year, 2019? Yeah, 19, uh, 19. 19, JK led the conference 6.6 yards per carry. Two more yards per carry. He had, he, uh, he had 300, yard, 300 attempts, but it, it just, he averaged more yards. Like he, mm -hmm. he got more yards per carry than Blake Corum by like a lot. 1,200 yards, 2,000 yards. Yeah. I, it's, I don't know. It's right fucking there in front of you. Like, and if you watch the film, guess what? It backs it up. No, it's, it's right there. And that's why I'm confused. It's like, damn, like you just see a light skinned running yeah, that's back. That's what it is. Number two in the Big Ten. And that's you it. said, that's, it. that's J.K. Dobbins. It's like, dude, he has the same skin tone as J.K. Yeah. And look, they put their arms up to each other. It's the same. Yeah. So they are the same. Like what? Some NFL comps getting real lazy out there. They're, they're so lazy. It's yeah. kind of a shorter guy. Like I get it. Came from the Big Ten, but like their running style is completely different. Both have strengths over the other. I'd agree, and, I, and yeah, I'd agree. Zach, do you want to get a word from our partner and then come back and continue this uh, NFL silly season debate? We'll be right back after this. Winter is here. We all know it. If you're up, up here in Columbus, where I am, you really know it. And the biggest struggle for me in my house is what temperature the room should be. Thank God I found Miracle Made because they're the best bed sheets I've ever owned. I've said it every time it's on. I'm not kidding. I got it for all my kids. Justine and I have two sets. They're outstanding and they're self cooling. It's for uh, they're made with uh, technology that's inspired from NASA, and they're self cooling sheets that give you better sleep. So the room can be a little warmer. You get under the sheets and you're not sweating to death. It's beautiful. They're self cleaning. They're comfort and quality. They're the, I keep saying it, the nicest sheets I've ever owned. They're a perfect holiday gift. And if you go over right now to um, try miracle.com slash menace and use promo code menace, it, it's already slash 40%. You'll get an additional, uh, 20% off. So 40% off already. You get an additional 20% off and then you get three free luxurious bath towels. Awesome Christmas gift. Go lock it in right now. And even if you, even if you know, if it's a little too late, you already, you already did all your shopping. Go get it for yourself. You won't regret it. I promise you. Go to trymiracle.com/slash/menace promo code menace to get an additional twenty percent off on top of forty percent and get the best sheets I've ever owned. There you go. Best We're sheets back. I've ever owned. I'm gonna throw you the lob dog because Mike Dewine just did some funny stuff. Yeah, Project Pat, producer Pat just told us. Uh, Mike DeWine announced he is going to ban college player prop bets in the state. So if you like to bet on Ohio State props, Buckeye football props, that little pipsqueak motherfucker is not letting you. How about that? What a world. It's kind of fucked. I, I, I don't hate many people, but I dislike, how about this? I dislike Mike DeWine as much as almost anyone and everybody that keeps voting for his ass. He's a fucking piece of shit. What he did to this state in the lockdowns, the fucking wine with the wine, stupid shit, just trying to become a celebrity That's and give thing. us an update. I guess I didn't even know. Oh, that was the thing. All these housewives, or not housewives, everyone was a housewife during COVID. All you could do was be in a the house. They would drink wine with the wine when he gave his weekly update and never told us shit. And he was just fucking robbing the state. I, I can't stand that motherfucker. So shout out to Mike DeWine taking away the prop bets on the Buckeye football players. I understand why he's trying to avoid a sticky situation where, you know, you got Marvin Harrison Jr. over or over a certain number of yards and the kid gets like a hundred grand to like maybe drop a pass or two. Like I, I understand what he's trying to prevent, but it's a free market society, bitch. Let it happen. And then that motherfucker should get in trouble for it. Like, that's like, you can't ban everything or else we end up like fucking hunger games. Like just, I get it. If somebody's stupid enough to do that, let them do it. And then let them face face the fucking consequences. Also, like, the other part of it is, like, never mind. I'm going to go down a weird rabbit hole, but they're not going to stop people from getting jammed up. No. Like, this isn't going to stop anybody. Like, if if Cousin Vinny is still, like, you know, wants, wants someone to drop a pass, he's going to go to the, the player with the same thing. Yeah. They're going to bet, but whatever. Um, well, never mind, Chris. If you're going to that length. 
you'll place the bet in Vegas. <laughs> you'll yeah. go somewhere you can bet it, you stupid fuck. It's just like weed. Hey, guess what? You finally legalized it. But for the, all the years before that, people were just driving up to Detroit. And guess who was getting all the tax revenue? The state of Michigan. You stupid son of a bitch. Like, it's just dumb. Now, like, meth? I got it. Like, really bad. <laughs> but, like, betting on a fucking over-under on a passing prop? Come on. The fuck are we doing? Um, back to Blake Corum real quick. I wanted to ask you, what, what round grade would you give Blake Corum? I think he's a second-round guy. Got you. Okay. Maybe I mean, maybe third, depending on what he runs. And, and that's not an insult on his value. That's just the position. We have we saw it, right? The whole fucking Zoom call. Christian McCaffrey, Saquon Barkley. Like, running backs just aren't valued like that. You have to be a special, special one to be a first-rounder. Yeah. And I don't – I mean, I think he's a second, maybe third-rounder. So, J.K. Dobbins was end of the second. Yeah. That, he's – that's right where – I think he has similar value to J.K. <laughs> Different player. Similar, similar value. Who do you view as a better prospect, Braylon Allen or Blake Corum? Braylon Allen. Okay, so would you give him probably a mid-second? Yeah. That was really quick. I thought we were going to have like a little debate or discussion about No, I, I think Braylon Allen is, is... I think he's three years younger, too. He, he's younger. He's more prototypical, like long-term NFL back. Like, he has the body for it. He's like 6'3", I think. He's 6'3", 245. Yeah, he's... He, He's just a different type of back, mm -hmm. and so I th and and I think he's outstanding. And he, keep in mind now, he was on a team that could not throw the ball the length of your dick. Yeah, and and he got to he got to campus and started as a freshman at 17 years old. Yeah, and so it's like his. I mean, it, his got, shelf life is longer, right? And and uh, and Blake Corum got more carries in both years. Additionally, he doesn't have the knee injury history that, yeah. that Blake Corum had. So, well, that was quick. Um, and then here's another spinoff question for you, Zach. What backfield do you like better? Judkins and Trey or Blake Corm and Donovan Edwards? Come on. That's not even close. Quinshawn Judkins and Travion Henderson were like collectively better than Blake Corm and Donovan Edwards last football season. I mean, just from explosive runs, yards per carry, like just watch the film. They were better backs. Not by a ton. I love, I think the backfield of Blake and Don were, it was phenomenal. Probably the, I mean, you're talking about those three. If Quinshawn Junkins was in Ohio at Ohio State this year, this past season, the three best backfields in the country are Ohio State, Michigan, Penn State. Yeah, no, I agree. I'd agree. Um, Zach, we did some super chats and then uh, talk about a little bit about some uh, some Michigan shit. You know? Yeah. Um, Cam, thanks for the fifty. Happy Friday, Zach. Hell yeah. Shout out to my little brother for finally watching the show, and shout out to my friend Josiah, uh, who's deploying to South Korea for nine months tomorrow. Damn. Stay safe, my man. We appreciate your service. And shout out little bro for watching the show. Hell yeah. Uh, Belisari, thanks for the five. For the following teams, are there more likely to fail to become bowl eligible or to make the national championship game next year? Iowa, USC, Oklahoma. To make the... So which one's more likely? Not make a bowl game or make the natty? For Iowa, we'll start with I that. Mean, fucking not a bowl game. Easy. Yeah. USC, the natty with Miller Moss, Miller Moses, no, the C's part, the no, defense's part. No, I don't, I don't think USC is going to be – I don't even think they're going to be as competitive as last year. They just lost the Heisman Trophy winner. Their defense has been ass every year under Lincoln Riley. I don't care that they got a new coordinator. It's been every coordinator he's ever had. Lincoln Riley ruins defensive coordinators' reputations more than fucking athletes ruin Kim Kardashian's vagina. Like, it's like I, – I don't know what to tell you. Like. I don't believe Lincoln Riley until I see that he can actually run a program with a quality defense. I think I don't think there's a chance in fucking hell USC can make the national championship game. But like you only have to win like what seven games to make six the natty? Game? No, six games. I'm talking about to make a bowl game. Yeah, I get it. I I think there's a zero percent chance that they make the natty. I think there's a five percent chance that they don't make a bowl game. Okay, so they open up with LSU. That could be a loss. Utah. They got Michigan, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Penn State, Maryland, Rutgers. Yeah, they're they're. I mean, they're going to make a bowl game. I'm yeah. not saying they're not going to make a bowl game, but that that has like what's more likely. Both are low percentage. I think not making a bowl game has a slightly better chance than going to the national championship game. And then the other one's Oklahoma. Oh, I don't know. Vegas told me they're only seven and a half over under. Yeah, I think I think the USC is going to be better than Oklahoma. Yeah, I think all three have a better chance of not making a bowl than going to the national championship game. Well, there it is. There you go. 
Uh, that was a great mailbag question, Bill. Sorry, you know, got some debate going. Brad, thanks for the five. Been a grip since I caught a live show. Uh, tall to get through 12 hours. Like the video. Y'all need to tell Apple y'all's vids getting cut short. Or, or on Apple. On Apple. Tell Apple y'all vids getting cut short. I don't know what that means. Me either. Like Apple Podcasts. Are they getting there's cut? no videos on Apple Podcasts. Oh, yeah, there's no. I will look into that. I don't know. Keel, thanks for the two. Chris, never mention Harden with D Wade ever again. You Ooh. never mentioned Dwayne Wade with James Harden once James Harden gets this ring. Dwayne Wade was never the best player on a finals team. Um, he got carried by LeBron and Chris Bosch, and then he got carried by Shaq. Well, re role reversal. And then uh, and then never did anything without him. And the Heat then made the finals with Jimmy Butler and Tyler Hero. So I'm not, I'm not going for it. Eric Sprolster made Dwayne Wade's entire I can't I can't keep it serious. I'm sorry. <laughs> he I'm was sorry. trying. Chris is reaching. I was fucking reaching. Keeled. Oh, I'm not reading that shit. Uh Jordan, thanks for the two. It was just Keel again, bro. I just fucked it up. Yeah, yeah. I oh. just I was just trying to play it off. I just want to see what it said. Yeah, yeah. Look at you, bro. It's weird like seeing you next to me. <laughs> I can see the shit now. Wait, just wait. Next week, we got a TV going up. Mm -hmm. we, this studio is going to have a level up. So here, here's a little update. We're going to drop the logo rebrand on Monday. Tuesday, the studio is getting revamped. So by end of next week, we're going to put out a kind of a studio tour once we get it cleaned up a bit. Just to let you know. Yeah. Stuff to be excited about. Um, Jordan, thanks for the two. The real King James is better than, I'm not reading, than Dwayne Wade. The real King James is James Harden. Yeah. Okay, that's good. I like that. That's, that was that took me a while to get there because I've just never heard uh, anybody I was say that. Me. Yeah, you you put that together. I'm proud of you, bro. Because I had no clue. I'm over here like, and I fucking hate basketball. And I love James Harden. That's really bizarre. Thank you, Jordan. Going to bat. Braun cost Wade a Finals MVP in 2011. Bro, Dwayne Wade was also also could have scored. <laughs> like he also could have won a game. Um, Jordan, thanks for the two. Mozzie Smith broke. Man, sold all of his shit. I don't think he didn't sell all of his shit. No, I, I'm telling I, I we obviously don't know how it happened, but I mean, I've heard, this has happened to players of mine. They go to the NFL, they're in fucking LA or wherever they go, and they're just busy as shit, and they don't make it back to Columbus for a year or two. And they it kind of it's not on their high on their priority list to pay for their storage unit that they threw all their shit into when they were going to move. Because it's a draft process. Like what's that timeline? Like, cause once everything what? ends, you see guys oh. working out almost oh. immediately. So how do you have time to even manage? All yeah, that? that's what they do. The minute the season's over, they're going to be on a flight going down to some training facility in Miami or San Diego or Phoenix or wherever. And so they got to get all their shit out of their apartment, sublease it, or just get out of there. Um, and, and it's, they can't take all that shit. They're going to live in a hotel. Like they can't take it with them. So they put in a storage unit and then like, you know, you start making money. You realize uh, that furniture, that futon I had was, I'm going to buy like a $3,000 couch now. Like I'm actually an adult now. And so they, a lot of times it's like, well, whatever. And the byproduct is some team issued shit. It might be in there. I don't know a gun safe. If, if it has guns in it, I wouldn't leave that behind. Yeah. Keel. Did Mozzie sell the Glock and 30 round mags to Keel again? He better leave the safe alone. 20 year prison bid. Yeah. What do you do if you buy that guns? Like, do you have to, I mean, you got, I would imagine you got to get in contact with the owner and, and transfer the, the, the licenses. I, I don't really know. Yeah. I, I mean, what if Mozzie's like, I'm not transferring shit to you. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm never going to sell a gun of mine. Yeah. They're, they're going to be mine till I die. That's wild. I guess I never, I never thought about I just would that. never do that. Like, and I know he didn't do it intentionally. Yeah, I'm but saying like, 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 like what if a gun you used to own, like, got and you, sold and you sell a, it, transfer ownership, all that shit, and then like, you know, three them. people later, it keeps getting sold, and all of a sudden that guy kills somebody, and somehow you got to go to trial. I, mean, I would just mm -hmm. would never do it. Yeah, like, what if that gun gets used in a crime? And That's like, what I'm saying. Mozzie, yeah. like, well, if, if he and if he's still if he's still registered, yeah, he's a registered it, owner. That's a problem. That's what I'm saying. It's probably still registered to him because he obviously didn't know that this was going yeah. on. Yeah, well, he probably knows now. It's, yeah, it's went yeah. pretty viral. Viral, 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 viral. Um, Andre, my guy Duke, thanks for the five. Ward Manual versus Brett Bielema in the eating contest. Who, who you got? Oh, man. I don't know. Ward looks more. Take the over. I, yeah, I'll take the over for sure. I think I would take Brett Bielema because Ward Manual is a massively fat human, but he's well put together, right? He, he, he's a he's a clean-looking fat guy. Brett Bielema looks like he just, like, like choked on seven hot dogs right before he like walked out of the tunnel. I mean, 
Brett Bielema, I I think Ward Manuel's going to have cholesterol problems when he gets older. I'm worried about Brett Bielema tomorrow. But isn't his wife, and his wife's a smoke show. His wife's a smoke show, but hey, money can do that. Money can do that. Like, Plus, you probably don't have to fuck him. You can't even find his dick. It's like, that's like Game of Thrones. Right. It's like, he just, he's just, like, this isn't that bad a gig. Yeah. I don't have to fuck him. We're rich as shit. I'm winning. That's what she thinks. I mean, I think so, too. Yeah. I mean, no one's going to say she's losing. But uh, Ward Manuel, um, Nevada Buck tweeted, Ward Manuel going down. Yesterday on the Buckeye Scoop show, Zach, they kind of went into detail that there are some cover-ups going on maybe in the Michigan Athletics um, regarding some uh, some uh, essay allegations in, with the hockey team. Yeah, that all kinds of shit. And, yeah. and I, I, it's hard for me to watch other shows because I have fucking 100 kids and busy as shit. But I, I watched uh, Buckeye Scoop's episode was last night. Yeah, um, good, I, I only listened like the first 25 minutes of it just because it, it was long and I was doing it. Yeah, book. but I listened to it. Really good show. You should check it out. I mean, they went through all the shit that that allegedly Ward Manuel is dealing with from, I mean, that he he knew about the sign stealing. And it, even if he didn't, it took place under his watch as the AD, which is a, could be a problem if there's other shit. If it was just Connor Stallions, Ward Manuel would not even be mentioned. But they're talking about he slow played and covered up rape allegations. Um, Jawan Howard threatened a, an alleged assault of a strength and conditioning coach. And instead of, you know, addressing that, they reassigned the strength and conditioning coach somewhere else. I mean, there's a bunch of shit. New yeah. allegations of sexual harassment by members of the men's basketball team that Ward Manuel helped cover up. Like, if everything that, that Buckeye Scoop put out there is true, oh, he's cooked, cooked. Like, fucking cooked turkey. And that's a big ass turkey. And one of the things that Kirk Barton kept bringing up was like the board of trustees. Like once they turn on you, it's over. Like he, oh, he's, over. he's seen this movie before. Yeah. And that's what it looks like it's happening. And they kept alluding to maybe a, a story coming out today. This would be massive, like black eye, egg on the egg on the face, egg on the shirt. We talked about it at great length. Like when Jim Harbaugh was going through all this, you and I talked about is this maybe lack of institutional control? If all of this is going down inside Michigan and he's the AD, it's Absolutely lack of control. Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, if it, if they're going to implicate the AD on all this shit, it's, I mean, it that fire's raining down hot. I mean, it's coming down. It shit rolls downhill. You think if the AD's out, they're just, he's just the scapegoat. I mean, I, the, the, the only thing saving Michigan right now, or at least the, the one caveat to everything is Harbaugh is gone, mm -hmm. right? They can frame it like that. Well, all those coaches are gone. Sharon Moore didn't know. And the only thing that could kill him is if there's direct evidence that Sharon Moore was a part of it. Yeah. Sharon Moore, if he's a part of it, it's it's they're gonna hammer him. I mean, this feels like just a chaotic offseason for them, especially. And then the other part of it is like I think about Ward Manuel and kind of how he approached Jim Harbaugh. He it almost felt like it was a holier than thou kind of thing between him and Harbaugh. Yeah. Like basically not wanting to give him this, this, and this because he didn't think he was doing things the right way. And they had like some disagreements. So it is weird hearing that he's potentially part of all these cover-ups when the reason he didn't want to pay Harbaugh what Harbaugh wanted was because, well, you don't do things, you know, buttoned up the way we want things done. Yeah, I think Michigan would be very, very well served to get his fat ass out of town. Yeah. I, well, you know, and even if, you know, where there's smoke, there's fire. Those are allegations. Those are just initial reports coming out of Buckeye Scoop. And even if, what, 30, 40% of it's true, got to go. I was going to say, if 15% of what they said on the thing is Yeah, is I mean, true. you can throw the, the, the sign ceiling yeah, stuff out. Yeah, because we like know that. that shit's true. Yeah, but we know it's true, but... Ward Manuel didn't know about it. Stop it. Yeah, okay. There's a, what, 5% chance he knew about that they were stealing signs. Like, I've been a part of many athletic departments. The most involved ADs, like Gene Smith, very involved AD. If we were doing that, he would have had no idea. Like, I'm I'm good on that. Do you think part of this is, well, it's it's wild because he just got named, like, the, the chairman of the committee. So I wonder, I wonder if, like, some of this is, like, coming from way, way upstairs. Like, we got to find a way to get bro out of here. Yeah, because he's causing a problem. Like him and him and um him and Jim had problems. Him and Beeline, that's the legendary basketball coach, had problems. I mean, you go back. I think across four or five sports, he ran out quote unquote legendary coaches from that program. Yeah. Um, and so I wonder if it's all kind of coming back to bite him. I, I don't know. I don't know if a story is coming out, but if it does, uh, holy shit, it's just gonna be. I mean, it looks like Michigan football, maybe athletics, could fall off a cliff after this. Yeah, I mean, it's it's, it's going to be – it's like anything else. You would have said that – here's the – I'll play devil's advocate. 
You'd have said the same shit in 2011 at Ohio State. Yeah. I mean, all the shit. Firing Jim Trestle. Like, this is look really, really bad look. Luke Fickle's the interim. Has the first losing season in over 100 years at Ohio State. And it's like, oh, my God. This is about to be the demise of Ohio State football. And all it takes is one catalyst, one thing to bring them back. Because Michigan's a storied pro, I mean, mm. athletic department. They just, this is a, a critical time for them. Like, Sharon Moore has to be a dude. Like, their basketball team's are worse than the Big Ten right now. Better figure something out. I remember way back when I was, I was talking about my guy Cam kind of comparing this Michigan era this time to that time. It was like, that was their, you know, Jim Harbaugh's their Jim Trestle, Sharon Moore's their Luke Fickle, but who's their Urban Meyer and who's their Braxton Miller? Yeah. Here are the two things. Their Urban Meyer is now the head coach at Bama. Their Braxton Miller is now committed to LSU. Mm -hmm. That's the issue. That's why I think this thing could fall off a cliff because look, DeBoer had been clocking that Michigan job for some time now, and Jim Harbaugh was double dutching. And and you know, by the time he was out, basically it was too late. Like DeBoer yeah. was already going to Bama, and Sean Moore was already next in line. Five star, number one overall player in the country, number one player in the state, quarterback, dual threat guy. Braxton Miller committed to Ohio State, and well, at Ohio State. Yeah, right. he was a fre his freshman year was the year before we got we came exactly and, and and you know committed to Luke Fickle even after everything went down. I mean that's that's the ideal situation, but you also if they do if they make the right hires and whoever they bring in as AD if they if there is a change in AD, it doesn't have to be Urban Meyer and Braxton Miller. It could be Mike Norvell and Jordan Travis. Who oh were, yeah, with the portal, who were era. not that right? Mike, right. You just have to make the right hire mm -hmm. and. I mean, granted, Urban flipped it in year one. Mike Norvell took three years. He also had COVID as a fucking Achilles heel. His first year was the COVID year, so scratch that one is not doesn't count. But you just have they have to make the right hire. That's that's it. You have you can't bring in Billy Napier. You can't bring in Dan Mullen. I had high hopes for Billy. I did too because I like him. Me too. And it's my alma mater. Go Gators. Um, Zach, I'm a little bit behind. I want to get a quick word from our party. God damn it, Chris. Okay, we got a double up special for you. We'll be right back after this. Leave it to our partner, Lucy, to, to change the game once again. I already told you they were the best uh, nicotine pouches on the market, but now they got something even better. Pouches packing a little something extra inside. They're called Lucy Breakers. If you know pouches, most of the time, the nicotine and flavor, it takes a minute to kick in. Not anymore. The geniuses at Lucy have created a liquid capsule inside e each breaker's pouch. All you do is pop it in your mouth. Bite it with your teeth and pop that breaker, uh, the liquid pouch, and instantly you get flavor and nicotine rush right away. That's all you got to do. Put it in your lip and enjoy the immediate nicotine and flavor release. No more sandpaper pouches drying out your mouth. No more weak flavors. They got it all. They got four or eight milligrams of tobacco-free, 100% pure nicotine. Six delicious flavors like apple ice, espresso. My favorite is the mango. You got to go check them out. Um, that's my favorite I, mango is a go-to. I love the apple ice. Also, um, all you have to do is break up your dusty gas station pouches and go to lucy.co forward slash menace and use promo code menace to get 20% off your first order. Lucy already offers free shipping and has a 30 day refund policy. If you change your mind, uh, the, the fine print though, here it comes. Lucy products are only for adults of legal age and every age order is age verified. This product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. But skip those old pouches. Go get you some of these Lucy breakers using our promo code menace at lucy.co forward slash menace to save 20% off and you get free shipping. Round two. Menace Army. It's not time to stop gambling. I know that much. Football season's over, but it's still a great opportunity to bet on some basketball. I'm not a basketball fan, but I will throw some money on some props. Shout out our guy Mensa, who will give you all the prop bets you need. And as always, the best sports book out there, my bookie, has got your back. You can parlay anything in the world. I'm talking rebounds, assists, probably how what what color Gatorade they get when they go to the bench. You can bet it all at my bookie. All you got to do is go to my bookie, use promo code Menace, and get that deposit bonus right now. Use our promo code and go lock in for basketball season. It's a time to build your bankroll because March Madness is a month away, baby. Mensa's got you with the picks. My bookie's the best sports book in the world. Go check it out now and get that free cashish. Oh, sorry. I had my Connor Stallion's uh, glasses on. Yeah. 
My bad. Game worn. Game worn. <laughs> Western or what? What was it? Central Michigan game. Yeah, they were scouting Michigan State. <laughs> Michigan State fucking sucks. Hey, shout out to Connor Stallions, though, because these things are sweet. These mm-hmm. Ray-Bans where you just push a button and it starts recording, yeah. they're awesome. Damn, I was going to I was gonna say I had something insightful to say, something um, good to say, but lost it. I was going to ask you about something. Ooh. Jim? Was Don't it the suck. sexual application of Connor Stallions' glasses? It, no, it was not. Oh, because that's where I was thinking about. It, it was not. Oh, okay. Um, Super chat. Let's, let's hit a couple. Uh Noon, thanks for the five. I actually resell shoes and PEs will pop out at uh, at Burlington Marshalls and Ross from time to time. Market is ridiculous. Yeah, nah, trust yeah, me. It's I, crazy. I've been in the cult. I'm it's, out, though. Hey, they're, bullshit. You'll be back in. You're just, it's just like being a fucking Giants fan. Okay, you're out. No, but I really am out. Like, I haven't bought a PE like, in like a year and a half. When Chris first moved here, he would he had me, his mom, like... A bunch happen. of people that did happen. like signing up to try to like get in. I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. He's like, bro, just go to this link and like try to get in at this time. And if you get in, like I'll pay for it. I'm like, uh, all right, like I'll do it. Like for you, I don't know mm-hmm. what the fuck that means, but it, some wild shit. Uh, yeah, that did, that did happen. So I haven't bought anything recently, but I've tried is what Zach's trying to say, yeah. but I'm done. It's like, it's God telling me. Yes, he yes, sir. He doesn't make mistakes. He's like, nah, he Chris, not. you don't not need any more. Corky, thanks for the two. How can I sue myself? Please let me know. I don't know. I, I should really sue myself for sure. I said you can only sue yourself if you're suing the CTE out of yourself. Got it. Uh, Nick Wood, thanks for the two. Great Friday. Turn 26 today. Like the video. There you go. The big two six. The big two Happy six. birthday. Eric, thanks for the five. I'd like Corum in Cleveland. To me, he's a younger version of what Kareem was this year. Automatic short yardage goal line back when Chubb needs a breather. What do you think about Corum in Cleveland? I would love it. I mean, value, right? Yeah, I think that's excellent. I think he be, I, I think that would be excellent for him, for his shelf life, and also for the Browns. I mean, I, I think that would be that would be phenomenal. Yeah, I think he's a great fit for a running back by committee approach. Well, and like with Nick Chubb coming off a knee, right? Mm -hmm. A bad knee. Like, I trust, I have full faith. I've seen Nick Chubb squat. Like, I have full faith his body's going to snap back like something we've never seen. But once a guy has a knee, it'd be nice to have that young, talented back there to either be the two punch or, God forbid, has to step in a role. Kind of like JK was with Mark uh, Ingram, right? Yep. Like, you want your two back to be good enough to be the one back on, a, like, a three- or yeah. four-week basis. I mean, shit happened with Kenneth Walker, and then he ended up excelling and then kind of being running back one over there in Seattle. So. Kind of happened with Tony Pollard. It, Yeah. <laughs> he came in to be the two Pollard. punch to Zeke, and after, like, two, three years, you're like, damn. But now they're not feeling it, bro, after he I know. Had, it's what happens yeah. to running backs. It's, it's saying, like, like, he got so bad in short yardage, I started seeing Cowboys fans talking about, you know who would have got that, right? <laughs> Zeke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Dallas is fucked up. <laughs> they are. Jordan, thanks for the five. Blake was going to win the Heisman if he doesn't hurt his knee. Henderson is also a bum. Never, ever, ever better than Blake. And he got boomed by Mikey. Okay, there's a lot to unpack here. But he did get boomed by Mike Sainer still. A phenomenal hit. I love Mike Sainer still, really so good. I, don't know what, yeah, I don't know what relevancy that was. If that was Blake Corum... In the same scenario, Mike Samer still would have boomed him too. Mm-hmm. But you're right. He did get boomed by Mikey. Blake Corm was not winning the Heisman. Blake Corm was not winning the Heisman. And if you watch the tape, Travion Henderson is a better back than him. Sorry. I know you're a Michigan fan. I know you really love Blake. You're 15 and 0 national champs. You're high on your horse, top of the mountain. Little reality check. Travion Henderson is a better back than Blake Corum. There you go. That's a fact. I hate to break it to you, but it is. In 2021, if Blake Corm is 100% healthy, Michigan does not blow out Ohio State. Oh, yeah. Donovan Edwards was the, was the catalyst. Like, if Donovan Edwards is on the bench, like, there's no way Blake Corm is outrunning Lathan Ransom. No. Like, not a chance. So, but it is what it is. Um, Where are we at? Oh, I love when Chris gets lost. Yeah, you know, I've been getting lost a little it's bit. It's literally more. just a little screen. You just scroll it. It's not it's not like a maze. Yeah, you know, yeah. Moving and grooving. Jordan, thanks for the five. Travian a dog, not gonna lie, but fuck him. My roommate was from Richmond and he a buckeye. He played Trey and uh would gas him crazy. We would always argue about who's better. That's more realistic. Yeah, that's a better, that's a better I appreciate the comeback. Yeah. I, you know, Jordan does a really good job. No, he that. Jordan's a real one. TJ, thanks for the vibe. Shout out, Army. Got a life change coming. Could use that menace Army 
what that menace energy sent my way. Go Bucks, fuck Michigan always. Brother, you got to wake up on, in in menace mode. You really do. And I got you. Shoot me an email. I'll give you, I'll give you a little pep talk. I had a great talk, but two nights ago. Here, here's the thing about me and this platform. Like, I had a guy who subscribes. He's in the general chat. I'm not gonna put his name out there because I don't know if he wants it out there. But he hit me up and he was like, "Hey, I'm, I'm, I just got into high school coaching, and I was wondering if I could pay you to be like a consultant and maybe like coach me up, talk me through." I was like, "Pay me the fuck? You already do." I was sending my number. I was like, "Call me." Like, I'm not. I'm out. I'm out here to. I don't know what the fuck value I could give you, but if I can help, just let me know. That's real. Um, I don't know if you saw TCU has unveiled their uh, their new renovations. I Badass. think it's, what in an extra fifty million dollars. They're adding a sauna, a cryo lounge, red light therapy, hydrotherapy, hydro massage pods, and the first school in the country with a snow room using purple snow. What the fuck does that mean? Don't know. But this is a case of another school with massive renovations underway. I believe Georgia just okayed a big renovation as well. Everybody's upping all their facilities, and I am once again asking Ohio State, please. Like, can we just make it look good? I didn't care if you do all the frilly shit. We don't need a snow machine. But Chris Chris and I went to an indoor facility in Brunswick, Ohio. Shout out to, to, to the GOAT. Yeah. That I walked in, I was like, fuck. I mean, it wasn't 100 yards. It was 60 Five, mm, maybe? 65 yards, I think. I'm like, this is a hundred times nicer than the Woody. Not as big, because it was. it's not for a massive football organization. But I literally, I was like, what are we doing? Like, this private company built this. Yeah. Ohio State can't level it up? Like, give me some windows, some brick, something. Like, it's literally cinder block, garage doors, and some big-ass banners. Everybody's facilities are leveling up. Literally everybody in the country. Well, and here's the, I think it's coming. Okay. I mean, we bring it in the A&M. It has been really quiet. It's been really quiet. And, you know, it's not going to happen tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I think in a year or two, they're going to announce some massive facility upgrade. And it's going to be like, and then we're going to get dunked on. Fuck these guys. All they talk about is facility. It's like, yeah, they did it. I think it's, I think it's coming. It's like like the NIL thing. Like we, like we, you know, sound the alarm on NIL. Then NIL changed, and everyone's like, you guys were wrong. It's like, no, no, we weren't wrong. It changed. It changed. People people love that. We wanted things to change, and, and they JK. changed. Mm-hmm. JK, was, JK Dobbins was not a home run back Mm-mm. until his final year. And then he was. And people wanted, to, oh, you said for two years he wasn't a home run back. I'm like, yeah, because he wasn't. And he trained his ass off, and Body by Mick became one. Shout out Body by Mick. So, yeah, I'm just, I'm just waiting, and I'm just keeping t- tabs on all the schools – that are uh, are upgrading everything and wondering when Ohio State is uh, going to. It was really cool yesterday, Zach. I don't know if you saw, but, like, athletes across um, Twitter were announcing that they're going to be in the game. Quinchon Judkins, um, you know, Quinn Ewers, Kate Klubnik all put up a post saying we are in the game. I thought that was really cool and a great marketing um, moment for EA. And then this happened. A list came out of all the announcers that are going to be in the game, the initial list. And honestly, I was looking at it. I'm like, okay, like I'm, I'm not going to get Gus Johnson. I get the ESPN Fox thing. But I'm going to get Reese Davis, Kirk Herbstreit, Chris Fowler, Palmer, Kevin Connors, and David Pollock. Shout out David Pollock yeah, for which, finding a job. I guess he must still be working for ESPN. Or they just hired him as like a, an additional personality. I don't know. But, yeah. I, I see the list, and I'm like, well, thank goodness you know who's not on the list. And yeah. then an hour goes by, Zach. And then it gets announced. Yeah, this is the one. That Desmond Howard will officially be part of EA Sports 25. What a failure. It's This is racism. It's pure racism. You have a competent, excellent, like, phenomenal announcer that happens to be black. And you went with the babbling fucking retard. The idiot. The moron. The dumbest motherfucker ever to grace a TV set. What are we doing? Like, but it, it would had to be just a, a deal with ESPN and ESPN picked who they wanted on it. I just don't understand ESPN's jerk off session for Desmond Howard. I really don't. Like, he is terrible, but I think that's his shtick. Like, I am such a fucking idiot that people watch, and I just, just couldn't be me. Like, I need full customization. Like, if I want to mute, I don't want to hear him. Like, no. I want to be able to mute certain people. I would, just like just like if Kyle McCord was still a starter at Ohio State, you could put him on a bench mm-hmm. if you don't like him. I want to be able to put Desmond on the bench. 
Like, no, fuck that guy. Get him off my off my game. Like, dog, I was celebrating him not being on that first list. People in the comments were like, oh, thank goodness Dez isn't on there. And then, because everybody else, like on three, like everybody reported that it was going to be, what, those five or six and yeah. not Desmond Howard. And then, of course, Desmond Howard gets his own fucking post. Unreal. I'm like, damn, we didn't have to do it. Unreal. Zach, this one was for you because you probably know more about this than anybody else. I guess the NCAA is looking to move the early signing period to early December before the portal opens right at the conclusion of the regular season. Yeah, that's that's probably smart. I mean, think about it. Having, having it where it is now, you're dealing with all that shit, right? You're dealing with closing out recruits and the portal being opened, transfer possibilities. I mean, I think that's the benefit of it, right, is, is they will be able to close a class and then enter portal season as opposed to all of it going on and it's like fucking chaos. That's the positive side, right, is you're going to have a windows open, closed, a new window opens in the transfer portal, and, and it, you can attack both separately. The only problem I have with it is what if you need to work the numbers of both of them, right? You're going to sign a whole class and then the portal opens. Someone's going to enter and you're going to be like, oh, shit. Yeah. We took that fourth, you know, that fourth corner because for depth and now fucking Will Johnson's in the portal. It's just, it's, it's, it's I think it's better this way, but it's going to present new issues. How are coaches that are playing in a championship weekend going to be able to close on a recruit with the in-homes? That's what I thought of. Because the in-home visits usually were after championship weekend, but now if it's early December, there's no way. Yeah, it's going to have to. They, they can't make it before the championship game. And no, there's no way. There's no way. It has to be the Wednesday after maybe. I, I don't know. It, we'll see when they put out a date. But I, I would imagine they'll just move it up a week maybe. That, that yeah. will be a problem, though. If you can't yeah. do those final in-home visits after the championship weekend, to close kids out for signing day. That's a big problem. And it penalizes teams that are playing they in their win. conference championships. Yeah. I did see a lot of outrage about it. Like talking about like moving it up was kind of not ideal and, and not really the play. Um, especially early December makes it a little trickier, but it, I, I see what they're trying to do. I guess when you put it, talk about the transfer portal stuff, but it's still, it, it just feels, it feels like there's no good place for it because you're trying to balance portal academics and high school and sports all at the same time yeah there's a lot of shit going on yeah there's a lot a, of shit a, a lot of shit going on how would that impact your life as a recruiter zach if you were i mean i, I would prefer it okay I, I, I and i'll have to wait for the details to see how you would structure that final in-home visit this is why i ask you this though because like yeah. you're, you're alone on this in terms of like well, here's, here's why i would like it you have so much equity that you can use in recruiting right and that is your time and if you have the portal open and signing day looming, you have five days in a week. Who are you going to see? It's like, damn, I got to close out all these recruits and all these, and I'm trying to get some of these transfers. How do I spend my time? Mm -hmm. I would love it to be incremental yeah. where I don't know what I'm doing right now. Nobody's in the portal. All my time and effort is on the class. And then once that's, or the, yeah, once that's done, then you move on and the portal opens. It's like, all right, round two, new landscape. Let's go get it. I think this is way better for that. I just need to see when signing day is so they don't, so championship teams don't get fucked because that's not fair. Like last year, Michigan couldn't go see a bunch of recruits at the end, but Ohio State could. Why? Because Michigan won. That's not fair. Yeah. It is like fighting one battle at a time, right? Like yeah. the last thing you want to do is go in a ring and fight two people. It's like, no. just go fight one. And then after this fight ends, we'll fight the other. Yeah. Um, not, that's 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 a good way to put it. I guess I guess I didn't I didn't think of it like that. Um, but that's why you know that's why you have this platform because you were the coach. I was I was a coach. Mm, I was not. Uh, I'm gonna hit a super chat, Zach, real quick. A DJ thinks for the five. Stupid DeWine. Now I have to spend more time studying Saudi soccer prop bets. <laughs> P.S. Bet the mortgage on Al Ahali game over two and a half this weekend. Oh, I can't. <laughs> Jared, thanks for the 10. Have a happy 40th, Zach. I will join you at the in the 40 Club next week. Okay. Let's go. The 29th. Oh, Justine and I'll be out there all weekend. Bridge Park. Probably end up at Yogi's at some point. Oh, yeah. 
kind of what we do. We might go downtown. I don't know what we're doing. I told her everything's on the table. Casino, strip club, you name it. Everything. Whatever whatever we want to do. Hope to see you and Chris at the, what, Hadalina Wine Mixer in May? Who is that? Uh, Jared Haddle. I'll have to look at it. I forget what that is. I'm sure it's I'm sure it's their wine mixer, the just the H A probably. Send me the info if you haven't already. I, for some reason that sounds familiar. I can't remember it though. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm gonna be on time this time, Zach. We'll be right back after this break. All right, Menace Army. As we're on this fitness journey, there's a big part of getting being the best version of you. And I found it. We got it. They sent me a bunch of meals. I've already tried it, tested it. It is menace approved. That is called Factor. Factor meals are two-minute meals. Fuel up fast with their restaurant-quality meals that are ready to heat and eat wherever you are. They have snacks, smoothies, all kinds of stuff. You can get anywhere from 6 to 18 meals a week. Plus, you can pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. It's a must-try for the Menace Army. The Menace Army. As we go down this path towards the best version of us, head to factormeals.com slash menace and use code menace50. To get 50% off, that's code menace50 at factormeals.com slash menace50 to get 50% off and start these easy meals that are nutritious and healthy, and it will help you be the best version of you. Go check them out. Go check them out. I remember what I was going to say after the last break. What? Tyler Comis, the writer from Ole Miss, gave us credit. How about that? So we did a show yesterday, and I, 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 so Corey Dennis is a friend of mine. Um, I was always honest about him as a coach, what I thought. Um, and I always will be, but I was really excited for Corey to get that opportunity to go to Ole Miss. I was really excited about it. We actually didn't hear it from Corey. We heard it from someone else. Then I confirmed it. And so we, we said that we broke, broke it on the show. If you want to call it that we don't care about breaking news. It was more like a shout out to Corey Dennis for forging his own path. And, it, it made its way to Ole Miss country, and they credited us for announcing it, I guess, or breaking the news, which is not something I give a fuck about. But I thought it was funny. Chris even mentioned it. They used our show name, both Chris and I's name. Yeah. And, like, spelled my name right. They spelled Chris's name right. The Buckeye beat would never, never, ever, ever. And I we see it all the time. Mm-hmm. Oh, just the fucking dick writing that they do when they steal it, steal the shit we say and just repurpose it as their article. And it's like, damn, like they with the Devin Brown stuff. I know we were wrong, but we said, I said, I thought Devin Brown was going to win the job. That's all I said. And they wouldn't even mention that we said it. They just would say, I know there are people out there. It's like, you fat fuck, they, say my name, bitch. They even would say like, Don't make me smack you in the mouth. Say my fucking name. You fat motherfucker. Shout out to Ole Miss and whatever his name is. Yeah, Tyler Comis. I like Tyler. Me too. No, I like Tyler a lot. I reached out to him. Uh, so that was dope. Thank you for the credit. And here's a, here's a cool thing. Tyler is a uh, young journalist getting things going. And in a world full of old journalists that gatekeep, the young one does the right thing by giving credit. And the way he wrote it, he said, Tyler, or he said, uh, Chris and Zach from Menace of Sports, uh, you know, reported this first. I was able to confirm it. God, that's how you do journalism. Imagine not, that. Not the guys from the other site. Or Call Brett McMurphy. Podcast. Tell Brett McMurphy he should go intern with him. Mm-hmm. Should so. No, I and I could. I honestly, I would. I wouldn't have cared. We wouldn't have cared. We wouldn't have cared. We, I wouldn't if have he cared. didn't mention us at all, we wouldn't have cared. I just thought it was so funny that he went through crediting us with all this stuff, mm-hmm. and I'm like, oh my god, the people in Ohio would never. I just yeah. think it's funny. Him and College Football Headlines gave the credit. It was like, damn, that, that feels nice, feels cool, and spelled my name right. So that's like another thing that like – Well, shout uh, out to Ole Miss. I'm a rebel. Yeah, and, and I was and telling I gotta, you – I got I to gotta say this too because this shit pisses me off. I'm, I've just been getting pissed off lately. I don't know. Maybe it's the, the extra testosterone from working out. But the, the people on Twitter, the people, that's what they're called, the people, the fucking morons – that started saying, like, oh, must be nice to be an Urban Meyer's son-in-law. Mm-hmm. Like, this is nepotism. I'm like, you can't be this dumb, right? Lane Kiffin and Urban Meyer hate each other. <laughs> Urban didn't get him this job. It's just wild to me. I will say the one guy did reply back and said that he was being sarcastic and more. Yeah, yeah. he's a part of the Army. Yeah, yeah, he, he did. But there were others. People. There were yeah. other people talking about nepotism and this and that. I was like, damn, like, 
Like, is there, did, is, did I miss something? Yeah, did I, did I, did I miss something? And I was telling you before the show, I feel like Corey's going on like a Chris Drew tour. Yeah, right. I'm here for it. Like from Georgia Tech, obviously I love them. Oh, to Ohio State. You better believe Jackson Dart's going to be in his Twitch stream at some point. To Ole Miss, I need, I need that. And honestly, like, like you know, I'm, I'm an Ole Miss fan because I'm a, a Eli Manning fan. So it's just been cool, man. Yeah. Corey Dennis. I'm excited for him. Me so too. I just wanted to give him his flowers again. I think Corey has a chance to be a, a big time coach. Oh, I think he prematurely got the Ohio State job because Orban, Ur, Orban. We'll call him Orban. Orban from Meyer. On. Crass, Orban. Crass and Orban. Crass and Orban. Orban Meyer uh, kind of forced the job on him. But I think this is great. So I just wanted to shout him out again. Oh, shit. I, and this just hit me, too. You know what else Corey Dennis is doing tour wise? What? Devin Brown, Isaac Wilson, Jackson Dart. What do they have in common? They all went to the same high school? Yes. And, and those the, are the three schools? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't even know how long he was at Utah, but that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, just, just like... Just so like Corey okay. Dennis is going to coach three kids from the same high school is what you're telling So you me. might as well go court, coach at Corner Canyon High School now in Utah. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, that's that's wild. All, all in, Yeah, because, uh, yep, Isaac and them. Cool shit. No one else has it. We had it. Just kidding. Um... Boop, boop. Mello, thanks for – oh, I, I skipped one. Isaiah, thanks for the 10. Solid work week, fellas. Again, Coach, happy I'm the I'm a man. I'm 40. Birthday, many more to you, my guy. Tell me about the coach's clinic at the Woody. Yo, Chris, NCAA is coming, bro. Grab some black forces. I might need a pair. Oh, he just said he was done buying fucking shoes, and now listen to him. Well, if anybody wants to send a pair to the office, <laughs> just so he, that yeah. could be his caveat. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna. I, I, yeah. Um. Anyway, uh, coaches clinic at the Woody. Tell, talk to it's us. It's awesome. Uh, it's I. I've been to a bunch of them. I think it's the best one. I mean, compared to like, I guess I haven't been to a bunch of schools clinics, but I've been to like Glazier clinics. I've done Glazier clinics. I've done high school clinics. Like the Ohio State coaches clinic. Assuming it hasn't changed, I haven't been since I got fired, obviously. But it's really cool because you get those big presentations. But then you get breakout sessions that are like really fucking like intimate. Like you're sitting there with Brian Hartline and he's clinicking you, not in a big, you know, 500 people. It's like 40 and like teaching whatever. And it's kind of, you, you can ask questions. He can, he'll demonstrate shit on you. Like it's, it's, and you're drinking beer, eating wings. Like it's really different, at least from anything I've been a part of. I think it's excellent, worth every penny. The same coach I talked to, Chris, you'll think this is funny, that I talked to kind of giving him some advice. As he starts his high school coaching career, he actually came up to the clinic this past summer and he said he was telling me all about the stuff Heartline was teaching it in it. He was like, and we got through like, he, it was all about top ends and like, and he was giving me all his coaching points. I was like, yeah, that's excellent stuff. Like, tell me. And he was like, yeah. And then I really wanted to learn blocking. So I went over to Keenan Bailey because I, <laughs> I didn't want to ask Heartline about it. I was like, yeah, probably a smart move. Look at that. Resourceful already. Young, already. young high school coach, resourceful. Mello, thanks for the five. On my way to Columbus for soccer, I'd camp with my daughter. Nine-hour drive from the A. O H I O. Wait, where is it? the A? Alabama or Atlanta? Uh, In this I would case. say Atlanta. Usually, people say the A. It's Atlanta. Got you. I just didn't realize it was only nine hours. I thought it was longer for some no, reason. No, that's about right. Okay. My sister makes the drive. Hey, March eighth, get your ass up here from Atlanta, from anywhere. March eighth is Menace Madness. The Friday before March Madness starts, we're live at Yogi's on Hard Road. I, I keep forgetting to plug it. I got to make a graphic. We're calling it the Menace Madness. And I, I, I'm going to work on some special, something a little different. You know, might try to get a couple guys out there, do a little something different. So March 8th, Yogi's on Hard. We're out here. We out here. Come hang out with us, the Army. Brad, thanks for the two. Mail is the worst part about being an adult. Fuck work, though. What is it? Male, like oh, male. I thought he said mayo. I was like, what's wrong with mayo? Male. Yeah. yeah, male sucks. I'm with you. I mean, I'm the worst at it. I've gotten better since I like have my life back together after getting fired, where I checked it. Like Justine brings the mail in and I go through and throw everything away that sucks. And then all my bills are auto pay, thank God. Cause I mean, we had the we've had the electric shut off randomly, like probably like five times because I'm in charge of bills. And it's like, oh fuck. And then I just pay it and it turns right back on. But I'm like, I'm just not good at that. <laughs> James, thanks for the two. Quorum comp is David Montgomery. That's a good one. Short yardage goal line. I think David's a little bigger, but stylistically, it's a yeah. good comp. Keel, thanks for the two. 
2006 finals, weighed 35 points a game, Shaq 13 points a game. I know. Study up. I I, I more said that more. Uh, it was satire. I thought yeah, everybody could tell at the end. Wade was fucking hooping. Yes. He was hooping. 2011, uh, Wade, 28 <laughs> points per game. Braun, 17 points per game. Well, honestly, uh, Wade was taking too many bad shots in 2011. That's what happened. <laughs> Hey, Harden would have averaged. We all stop talking about fucking basketball. Uh, Nobody I'm cares. Not, I, I don't even. I'm not bring, talking oh, to you. I'm talking to the chat. That's what I say. Nobody. Chris might have said some dumb shit. I don't know. I don't care. Dwayne Wade sucks. How about that? I don't fucking care. I like him. I like him and G Gabrielle Union. I think they're awesome. He's got a great family. They seem. They seem like they're really in love and have fun. Yeah. I like. I like couples that look like they have fun mm -hmm. and they like enjoy each other. Daniel, thanks for the two. The real King James is Rick James. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> Here we go. Jordan, thanks for the five. King James Harden, two 40-point games, a game winner in the playoffs last year after everyone said he couldn't carry a team again. That's that's real. Okay, it might be. Points. Guess who didn't watch? I told you. I bet on one fucking game. You lost a lot I had of my money. Mensa challenge. I took $500 before I went to Vegas. I had like eight days, and my goal is to turn it into ten grand. I made Mensa tell me his favorite prop every day. I turned that $500 into $6,000. And randomly one night, I'm watching the NBA. I didn't, I didn't turn it on. It just was on the TV, the NBA Finals. And I don't even know who played. But one of the teams was losing by fucking a million points. And I'm like, oh, I could fire a live bet right now on a, a crazy spread. Because it's the NBA. They're going to come back. Mm -hmm. I lost all $6,000. And you know the worst part? The next day. Mensa's props swept. Like, if I just wouldn't wouldn't have done it, it didn't matter what prop he told me the next day because they all won, and I would have put six grand on it. I would have had, like, 11 grand, and I would have taken 11 grand to Vegas. So that, that's part of the reason I hate the NBA. Fuck them. DJ, thanks for the two more. So many super chats by Keel. Must be payday today. <laughs> Keel for the two. Harden equals Dak Prescott. I take issue with this. I think it's much closer to Lamar Jackson because he's got M he's got the MVP and four scoring titles. If y'all are gonna do this, I'm gonna just I'm gonna just sit out a segment. I mean, I don't know why they're doing this. I know I'm talking to them. Oh yeah, yeah, all right. I don't care. James Harden is the best basketball player ever. James Harden sucks. There you go. I don't care. James Harden is very good at basketball. Shane, these are the two. Chris. OH, great stats and players last 10 years equals no natties. All right. All right, all right, all right. Thank you. Uh, Jordan, thanks for the two. Me and Keel make money. Rest of y'all broke. Got it. Richard, thanks for the five. LeBum will never be better than MJ, the real goat. Oh, and it's fuck U of M. More basketball talk on a fine I'm Friday. I'm okay with that one. I'll fucking talk about that all day. Uh, we won't. Keel, Jordan. thanks for the two. Chris will get dunked on. I don't want to get dunked on today. I want to do it. And, and I don't have any stats to back it. So I'm just going to like bully him with words. <laughs> I'm going to bully like him. He'll, he'll throw all this shit like LeBron does this, this. I don't give a fuck. He's soft. Just I, like you. <laughs> I, I won't even argue. I won't even argue with old heads anymore about the Bronx. Man, stuff. if you don't stop calling me a fucking old head, <laughs> you are too close to me to talk to me like that. Use me across the room. I'd have to throw something at you. I was just saying, man. Like, oh, you can argue with my uncle. Yo, thanks for the two. No, DJ hit a massive soccer tennis parlay. What the fuck are they on? Hey, we some degenerates out in this motherfucker. Betting on soccer tennis. All right. DJ, thanks for the two. Proud of you. Uh, take the Saudi soccer play. There you go. This is one. This is one we like. Andy Joe Taylor, Miss Menace herself. Holy Toledo, fellas. The Lady of Menace is doing the national anthem. Oh, and pregame tailgate for the Toledo Mud Hens, Mud Hens opening day. If any of the Army is going to be there, come say what's up. Here, let's see what it is. I saw that. She put it on Instagram. Maybe just Justine and I will head up. Shit, I'll take my kids. Toledo, Toledo, Toledo. I love minor league baseball. The Clippers. Mm -hmm. Friday, March 29th. Uh, opening weekend at 5th, 3rd. Friday, March 29th. Oh, yeah. That's opening day. That's coming up. You know who our, my minor league team is? The Rubber Ducks. Fuck the Rubber Ducks. <laughs> okay. Their names, are they really the Rubber Ducks? Is yeah, that their bro, name? It's the Akron Rubber, Rubber Ducks, bro. Your Cleveland Guardians double-A baseball team owned by Ken Babby, the GOAT, who changed the name. It was from you the know what? I think I, I think Cam played in their stadium. 
You, you probably did. It yeah. was sweet. Sweet stadium, bro. Ken Babby, great guy. Well, for a fucking 14-year-old baseball team, yeah. Justine and I had a table with an umbrella. My feet are up. I was like, fuck, can we play every tournament here? Shout out Ken Babby, man. He changed the name from the Arrows to the uh, Rubber Ducks. The Rubber Ducks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> rubber, rubber Ducky. Rubber City, but everybody's the pregnant. One. Rubber Ducky. So much fun. <laughs> No, but Rubber City, everybody's pregnant. Can't wait for my 10-year reunion. Trying to get Zach to go with me. Everybody's pregnant. Everybody's Chris pregnant. really asked me if I'd go to, go with him to his 10-year reunion. I was I like, just, Chris, I didn't go to mine. I just, I know you were coaching, bro. Was I? Yeah. Oh, yeah, probably. I just want, I just. Well, I just had one. What was it? Oh, my 20-year. I had bro, my 20-year like two years ago. Bro, you and Justine should come to my 10-year. We'll pull up. Just mob outside. We'll pull up. Yeah. We'll do a live show from Chris's. That's what we'll do. Absolutely not. We'll Absolutely. do a live show not. from Chris's 10-year no, reunion. No, and we'll not. bring on former classmates no. of his. That is That's a, a fucking great that idea. That is a terrible that, idea. Never mind. No. I'm in. That we is are a, in. That is an awful idea. Pat, set it up. I had Pat, don't you fucking dare. Pat, I will I will not pay you. I the next pay period won't be there. Up. I won't be there. He doesn't I, have to be there. Oh my God! I will. I will oh, call. That was really dumb, Chris. I thought. Oh, this is gonna be fun. Yeah. Well, <laughs> all girls too. Shout out, <laughs> God. <laughs> all the girls. Um, shout out. I went to Revere High School. <laughs> the fuck you did? I know where you went. <laughs> so I went to, I went to Re Revere. Oh, he's so nervous right now. <laughs> ah, Harden equals Matt Stafford both winning in L.A. I lost today. Is all I know. I don't know what's going on. Um, so, but that's great, Jordan. Survive the hunt. Thanks for the five. If Ward gets canned and needs a job, I hear Blake two or B two C vacuum business hiring. Imagine Job of the Hut selling Hoover's door to door. That'd be awesome. <laughs> Dog, whatever happened with that? Like, how was he able to defraud a player and then nothing happened? I don't know. Nothing ever. Happened. I'm just waiting for that storage unit to be like gone through and like some LLC paperwork in Mozzie Smith's possession. Like, <laughs> I just need to see how deep this thing went. How deep it runs. DJ makes for the two. Ward thought Dunkin' Donuts was the men's basketball team. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Billy Buckets, thanks for the two. <laughs> the King Buckeye on two is fat. I don't know who that is. The King Buckeye on two? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he is. Fuck that fat guy. <laughs> I don't know what we're talking about. James, thanks for the two. Ward Manuel on the College Football Playoff Committee, <laughs> crime in and of itself. Yeah, he, he's the chairman of the College Football Playoff Committee, and now there's all these allegations or allegedly he all this shit. Like, this is a wild, wild time. Mm -hmm. Posh, mom, thanks for the 10. Thank goodness it's Friday. Love you guys and love you addressing Buckeye Scoop stuff. Met Kirk through your live at Yogi's. See y'all on the 8th. Have a great weekend. Kirk's my guy. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of opinions on Kirk Barton, but I love that motherfucker. Big dude. When he walked up to the, the Bro, table. He's, he's just, I am six two and a half, two hundred fifteen 215 pounds right now. Shout out to my 12-pound weight loss so far this year. That man makes me feel like my 14-year-old. Like he is just a giant. Like what, bro? Orlando he, Pace is the only person I've ever seen next to him where Kirk looks a little bit smaller. Bro, during the live <laughs> show, we had all the lights up and they were a little bit far back, and he walked up to the table, and I saw the shadow of him cast is, over me, and that's when I knew I had to get up. And like in shape, like I'm not saying fat, yeah, like no, he no. is just a, a big dude. Mm -hmm. If you haven't met Kirk Barton, I'll see if he wants to pull up to on the on the eighth. You got to come meet him. If nothing else, just to shake his hand and feel. Like, if you're feeling like you're a little fat or a little big, just shake Kirk Martin's hand. He's going to make you feel like a skeleton, like a little <laughs> tiny human. Uh, the amputee gamer, thanks for the five. DeWine looks like a crackhead Kermit the Frog. I've, God, I, if I, I think DeWine has shifted into the second person on my list of people that I would love to just punch in the face. So, Brett and then him. Brett McMurphy's one and will always be one. I think DeWine might be two. Hmm. I think I got Dez as my one. Yeah, I'd love to punch Dez in the face too. That would be fun. I think Dez is I think Dez is the one. Jordan, thanks for the five. Let me get in a menace fantasy league. I'm gonna do y'all fools in generals only. I'll be one by I'll be one by then too. Uh fantasy football? We had yeah. one last year. We'll we have had, one again this year. We had a bunch of them. <clears throat> yeah, we gotta figure out a better way to do it. Yeah. We had like what like four separate fantasy leagues and it was too much because because i was chris and i were in all of them mm -hmm. and it was fucking too much i was already in two other leagues now i'm in six and it's like all these lineups i don't know who i'm rooting for 
I just need one massive menace league. I don't know how to do that. If you do, shoot me an email, please. Um, Gorgie, thanks for the two. I'm seeing out of my <coughs> utero lack of CO2 birth. Okay. All righty. Don't talk science with us. Yeah, I, I was not very good in science class, but we'll find that at the reunion. Um, Pat, you want to get a... We'll be right back after this last word from our partner. All right, Menace Army. The Super Bowl's over. Football season is in the past. And now it's on to basketball season. And if you haven't done it yet, you got to go check out Prize Picks. It's daily fantasy sports. If you don't... I love fantasy sports. I love putting a little money on it. There's the perfect tool, the best in the country, in the world, is prize picks. Basketball season's here. It's time to be pick, pick a couple players and pick a couple of their stats, maybe rebounds, three-pointers, points, assists, whatever you want, and, and just project more or less. And when you do it, you put them all together, you can win up to 25 times your money. Massive payouts at prize picks. And my favorite part about prize picks is an injury can't screw you. If you put some money on Kevin Durant, and in the first half, he breaks his shoelace and doesn't play in the second half. Your whole pick gets rebooted. You don't lose. It's a beautiful thing. It's the only daily fantasy sports out there that does this. If your player gets hurt, you can't lose. You can win up to 25 times your money. All you got to do is go to prizepicks.com forward slash menace. Use code menace to get a first deposit match up to $100. That's free money, Menace Army. And you know what I say? Don't ever turn down free money. Go check it out at Price Picks now. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> About to get rid of Twitter on these dumb fucks. Alex, thanks for the two. How did you use last year's film in the offseason? Um, I didn't do a great job with it. I did a couple offseason breakdowns. It wasn't very good. That's that's why I'm so excited about Bourbon and Ball. Um, it's coming next week. I already got – so we got another Will Howard breakdown coming. I got two games of Chip Kelly to, to break down his run game. <clears throat> After talking to some of the coaches at Ohio State, Chip Kelly's definitely – I guess running the show more than I thought he would. I mean, they're changing terminology. They're, they're really, it's one of those things where this is power, right? Mm -hmm. We called power Mickey for Mickey Marathi. Power, strong guy, right? Chip Kelly might call it Bongo. Justin. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't matter what it's called. It's still power. Yeah. So they're going through right now and kind of getting on the same page and, and, and organizing and designing this offense, which I think is awesome. It is wild though, because like, like, is anybody even in the Woody right now, like coaches wise? Well, no, not right now. Yeah, I mean they're in there. Not Chip Kelly, not Ryan Day, not. I mean, well, that's the two that I'm thinking about. Like, yeah, Chip and Chip and Ryan, because I think the Buckeye Cruise is still going on. Buckeye then, Cruise is going on. Chip's not on it, but he's not in Columbus. No, I think he's in Hawaii. I don't know if it's a secret or not. I don't either. But shout out to Chip getting a little Hawaii vacation in a yeah. week before spring ball <laughs> <laughs> with with new quarterbacks with new quarterbacks that don't even know what fucking formations we run <laughs> should go well <laughs> alex thanks for the two I already read that dj thanks for the two more at jordan sorry no children allowed Woo, jordan with the clap back this child got more money than you sad wow keel stepping in come on guys no money shaming rose thanks for the five referencing the last yogi show i know mullen is kind of a jerk but was he really that hard to work with yes. that we wouldn't want him? Yes. Okay. Hunter, listen, he is cancerous. His ego just is cancerous for a staff. He's a phenomenal offensive scheme play caller. Like he's out. I mean, just so smart. But if he walked in that door, he would demean everybody. Mm. It would be, I mean, it, it would not be good. I would not. I don't want that. Yes. Edwin, thanks for the two. Happy Freaky Friday. Thoughts on Blue Mountain State? I never really watched that. Did you watch it, Chris? No. Yeah, I never really watched it. I really just watched anime growing up, dog. Yeah, but I, I, I watched shit like that, and I never watched it. Maybe I'll have to check it out. Justine and I will watch it. Um, Ferguson, thanks for the five. Oh, you think there'll be a feature in Dynasty Mode and NCAA to send a coach to other schools to steal signals? <laughs> <laughs> that would be hilarious. That would. I know there is going to be NIL and all that shit. It's going to be wild. Jordan, I might, I might start playing the game. Like, we'll get one in here. I, I'll be down. <laughs> Pat just got really excited. <laughs> yeah, Pat, Pat got too excited. I'm worried Pat might be good at the game. Hold up now. I might need a little producer co-host challenge. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, <laughs> want that. 
Jordan, thanks for the 50. This is in reply to saying no money shaming in the chat. Nah, fuck that. Tell him to get his funds up. Wow. Why don't you put it on the screen? Oh. See what I deal with. Yeah, every day. <laughs> DJ, thanks for the two. Ever notice Ward looks like the before picture? He, he definitely that's, is a before that's picture. That's an insane insult. Like That's an insane insult. <laughs> insane that is actually nuts y'all are fried jordan thanks for the five let's go band for band for super chat grown men can't possibly lose to a 24 year old fuck get your th- get your funds up hey listen i'm you don't need to do that but i certainly won't stop you yeah jordan's greatest hits coming up my guy drew thanks for the 20 good news for the um players that got caught for sexual abuses they'll have a guaranteed staff job joining the pedo the cyber the cyber criminal bo's racist son the evidence destroyer and the spy and gun charge cover upper all brought to you by dave portnoy and barstool sports michigan men michigan men tag team match urban and zach versus dab on warner can zach and urban what coexist one last time and surprise surprise special guest referee Mike Vrabel. We would why wait, why is Ed Warner with Dabo? <coughs> I'm confused. It's super chat Friday. I mean, we would mop the floor. I think I could beat up Dabo and Ed Warner by myself. Hey, just so you know, you got you got a former player in here wild now. Who? You're about to see. Jared, thanks for the five. Zach Smith wine mixer info is in your messages. Gotcha. Ah, shit. I what? I I'm not trying to be like. There's so many fucking messages and so many social medias. Can you just email it to me, Zach Z A C H at menace two sports dot com. I'll look through my messages, but there's a couple. If it's on Facebook, I don't see it ever. I don't ever go to those messages. Don't care about them. Like it's just too much. I usually go through Twitter. Instagram, I don't know. They put it in that weird request folder, so I miss them all the time. But if you email me, I'll get it. But I'll look through. I'll, I'll try to find it. Jeff Green, oh, thanks God. for the 20. It's still Black History Month. Tell Charity to do the right thing. <laughs> See, now Jeff's out here outing himself. Shreggy? Keo, thanks for the two. Chris, we got beef. I don't care if you were joking. Rose, thanks for the two more. Uh, freak chat. Send me a beautiful 6'2 Iowa farm girl. Okay. Uh, uh, I don't, this is not, I don't know what's going on hey, today. It's Freaky Friday. Everybody got different kinks. It's the, freak, it, it's the freakiest Friday. DJ thanks for the two. I'd care if D Wade played on a Saudi soccer team. Okay. We're getting closer to it. DJ thanks for the two. Rose, a 6'2 Iowa farm girl equals uh, what? Bilama with a wig. Enjoy. They could be muscled up. Hey, some people like going hogging. It's okay. Okay. Keel, thanks for the two more, Tim. Don't talk to me in the free chat, bum. Didn't you just say, no? you know what? Not going to go for it. David, thanks for the five. Chris, grow a set and let Zay hardens the ultimate choker. Honestly, I don't. I'm not even going to the. I don't want to go to the. You know, no, now you don't. I don't want to go. A minute ago, you were all about it. But I wanted you just to see, like, the people. I do, and I want to bring them on screen and no, talk to them. No, 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 no. Yes, no, no. they never. But here's the thing: they never saw the vision. Like they never believed. I don't home. care, Chris. We can all form our own opinions. Damn it, <laughs> Rose. Thanks for the two, DJ. No, Bert looks like the pigs that wash him. Okay. Um, Speed. Thanks for the two, dude. We got to get Chris's teacher admin at the reunion. Yes, teachers. My my teachers all love me though. I'm, oh, I believe that. Yeah, all of them, all of them, all of them, all of them. Chris's eyes when Zach said the R word. <laughs> yeah, I should. I, I was. Just, I shouldn't have said that. I, I mean, I have a bad vocabulary, but that's a word I don't use. That's fucked up. Now, I was. So I just got so fired up about how much I, Desmond Howard is, and, and I, I shouldn't have said that. I, I just, apologize. That's the first time I've ever heard you apologize for something. You something. Yeah, I just don't like that word. I yeah, shouldn't no, have I said you. it. I got you. No, I got you. Um, Ben, thanks for the two. The cl- Chris, the Clippers ain't winning jack shit. Can y'all just let me have something? <laughs> No, like, no like, they, will, they will never. I said it one time. It's a football show. <laughs> Noon, thanks for the five. If Ward Manuel gets fired, <clears throat> wouldn't he fit in perfectly with the Buckeye beat? He's got the BMI oh. requirements met. Oh, Ward Manuel's the perfect candidate for the Buckeye beat. 
Hey, y'all are the most unhinged. Tristan, thanks for the 10. Can either of you guys think of a program that has imploded like Michigan after a natty? Never. And they haven't even gotten in trouble yet. No. <laughs> no, I, I can't. I can't think of this happening ever in the history of football. This is the most like magical dominant season they've ever had in program history. One of the, I mean, count how many teams have have went wire to wire undefeated to win a natty. There's not a lot of them. And for this, this all to happen really, I mean, just wild. Yeah, actually wild. And they're not even in trouble yet. No. Broke the combine record though. Most players invited. Connor, thanks for the 10. Hey, coach, my little bro wants to be a coach for a career. He already helps out my other brother's AAA and high school hockey teams, but wants to do it full time. Have any tips for him to advance the career? Just, hey, man, start reaching out places. I don't know hockey, but I'm sure there, there's a path. I, I would I would reach out to Ohio State hockey, Bowling Green hockey I know is really good. I, I don't know where you where you live, but just start reaching out and volunteer. Is what I just told the, the, the guy I consulted with two day, two nights ago. He, he, he was a receiver coach at a school, and they don't throw the ball. He wants to get to this other bigger school in the area. And I was like, dude, just go show up and say, hey, do you have any volunteer coaching opportunities? Mm -hmm. Like, no high school coach is going to turn away a guy that has coached high school football that'll just do it for free. That's a foot in the door. Yeah, Like, get your foot in the door and then grind your motherfucking face off. Alex, thanks for the two more. My bad, coach. Last year's film as a coach in the offseason. Oh, yeah, you watch cut-ups. You watch cut-ups of... Um, your team or other teams mostly? No, no, your team. You, I mean, you, you in the summer, you'll dive into some future opponents. But right now, like all they've done all month is they'll sit down, Justin Fry will sit down and watch the run game, like concept by concept and see how good was it. He'll get all the analytics on it, like it averaged this, 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 like the statistics. And then he'll watch it and be like, what? Well, and he'll he'll have a chart and he'll be like, all right, here's where the, here are the problems for this concept. Here's what we weren't good at, like a certain double team or the puller or whatever, whatever it is. You just analyze it, I mean, with a fine tooth comb to the finest detail and say, all right, here's stretch. Why was it, how could it be better? What do we need to be better at? What else could we do? You just try to enhance everything. Cut-ups are the, the most powerful thing in the world. And that's what's really hard on this side is like, damn, I would love to do that. Do you know how fucking long, how many man hours it would take? For us to make a stretch cut up forever. I mean, we we did one, the Jim Knowles third down defense, mm -hmm. but it's tough. And and the person making the cut up has to know that it's stretch, right? Yeah. I can't just hire some high, like cheap intern that doesn't know doesn't know football and doesn't know stretch. It's like it's, it's tough. Um, Jonathan, thanks for the five. Enough. Team up north, so called natty is fraudulent. OSU will demolish them in November. And the bandwagon fans will run to their holes. Silence broke trolls. There you go. There it is. A premonition. There you have it. Kiel, thanks for the two. Jordan equals <laughs> only Michigan fan whose money matches his mouth. Okay. Well, that's, there's some truth to that. My guy, Caveman. Chris and Zach, been a long week. Thank you guys and Menace Army for keeping me laughing in general chat. Chris, get your game up on Twitch. I'm streaming tonight, Zach. I'm going to get put like four hours in. So there you go. Because that's about 18 losses if you want to <laughs> do the math. But I'm sticking with it. DJ, thanks for the five. Uh, an Ohio State fan and a Team Up North fan are walking down the road when the Ohio State fan says, how sad a dead bird. Team Up North fan looks up and says, where? Dad joke champ. That is a dad joke. Hall of Fame. Yeah. James, thanks for the five. Couldn't be more thankful for Menace to Sports. Haven't listened to the beat since the bearded days. Ooh, OVE is great. Add two. Like the video, y'all. Love James. that. Shout out OVE, man. Live at three every day on our on our platform. We got some new things coming with them uh, March 1st. So look out for that. But yeah, I love Torg. Sam Grooms, I think they do a great job. Especially they launched like right going into the off season mm -hmm. and I, and I, I wanted to do it. They wanted to do it. We wanted to do it, but I was like, understand like you're coming off the hill. Yeah. And then the you're going to, there's going to be another hill called spring ball. And then, you know, transfer portal and then the fall. And that's when it's really hopefully going to explode, but they do a great job. I would encourage everyone to check them out at three every day on our channel. Shane, thanks for the two keel in a nutshell, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Keel with the reply. Thanks for the two. Shane equals a, a bit, what, beta, 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 until he pays his bets. 
Shane, thanks for the two. Zach, give us a loud one time, please. I'm a man. I'm 40. Let's hear it. I'm a man. I'm 40. Very good. That'll be cut it up and have fun. That will be cut up. Jordan, thanks for the two. We need Chris's classmates to tell stories. Need. That's what I'm saying. I'm doing it. The thing is, there's no interesting stories. I th- we'll find something. Like I'm I, really fucking good at this. I uh, well, I started my high school. I started high school at, at 13 years old and on, on probation. So like, I was just trying to lay low because I was embarrassed that my probation officer had to come to the school twice, <laughs> like twice a week. <laughs> so like. It wasn't exactly like, you know, yeah. I wasn't viewed as like, oh, let's go be that kid's friend. Like his probation officers, you know, <laughs> the is, fuck is this guy? Yeah. And I, uh, and I, and I left like the middle school that everybody goes to the year before in the middle of you it. See, and, so you see what's happening right now. Like nobody's he's trying me. to set, set the stage. Cause if I do this, then it's like, okay, I'll, let me set him up. Yeah. For like, what's coming. Like nobody saw me for six months. And I just randomly appeared back in Akron because <laughs> I was at McCord middle school. Oh yeah. I know down here yeah. in Worthington in Columbus. Mm-hmm. God. DJ, thanks for the two. Rose, a eh? slap her thigh and ride the wave in, buddy. Mm. Talking about the the six two yeah. island girls. All right, hey, sounds scrumptious for one of you, Kyle. And it's not McCord. Thanks for the five. Charity is a gangsta. She's been standing in the paint. <laughs> Happy Freaky Friday, Charity. Jeff Green is interested. If you if you didn't get that message, yeah. he he swiped right. I believe we got we got both the Jeffs right, both of them. <laughs> Um, want to hit our men, our general super mailbag questions, then get us out of here. Going a little bit long today, Zach. Hope, oh, you yeah. hope you didn't have anything going on. I know you got a meeting here soon, so my apologies. Um, DJ, is there no hire or dead period for coaches? Example, can I hire an old miss analyst for a lot more money than his current pay nine days before playing them in a natty to get insta- intel like signs? Essentially, buying the needed intel to win the natty. Not a bad one million dollar investment if it works but we're better than that. Yeah, I mean, hypothetically, you could do that. Now, that I, I, it'd be really hard to make it happen because that that quality control, that that analyst, whatever, they would never get a job again. Mm-mm. Like, no coach is going to hire somebody that would do that, would backstab an entire staff. No no one would. Like, you'd end your career, so it better be a lump sum that you feel like, I'm, I'm good. I'm just going to go. This is my retirement package. Yeah. But you could do that. It'd be okay. Because they're not, it's not like they're under contract. They don't have one-year contracts. Um, Emily wants to know how big is important is spring ball? Does this usually translate to the fall and who starts to become a guy too? Uh, are there big fall offs or gains in this period? Just want to know exactly how to be excited, how excited to be after the spring. Yes. Spring is, is my favorite time. I mean, I love season. I love games. It's obviously the co- competition side of it, but as, as a teacher, right. You're, and that's what these coaches are. They're teaching these kids. Spring's the best. Because you have two full days for every practice. Whereas training camp, it's a practice every day, right? So you got to move on fast. In spring, you can really deep dive into, into practice film. And it's where all the foundational teaching is done. And certainly, you know, there's competitive battles that you kind of come out of spring and say, damn, this guy has the lead. He looked better in spring. Doesn't always mean he's going to be the guy in the fall. But it gives you an indication. You, you learn about your team. But it's really about the teaching, and it's outstanding. So, yes. Now, it also is a time where fucking Michael Thomas is a freshman, is a spring game MVP, and everyone's like, this is fucking, this is going to be Calvin Johnson. And you're like, will you fucking relax? It was a spring game. <laughs> like, And he ended up becoming a great player, but certainly not his freshman year. So it, you, you got to take it with a grain of salt. It is spring ball, but there's a ton of teaching and development that's going to go on. Um, my guy, Wild Naysayer. Great name. Wild naysayer. I keep hearing Chip is going to run Ryan's offense. Chip loves QB runs and getting the ball quickly into space with perimeter blocking. The need is for the offense to have a CEO. And if that's Chip, how does it not look totally different next fall? Well, Ryan's still the final say. That's how it doesn't. And Chip is, I mean, he has an, enough of a enough respect and, and enough of a resume to just say, okay, that, if that's what we want to do, I can I can fall in line and do that. So we'll see. I'm excited to break down the, the two UCLA games from this year that I want to break down to see the what Chip did in the run game. Um, and we're breaking that down on Tuesday, bourbon and ball, um, with my blood oath, uh, bourbon. I forget which one it is, number nine or six. I forget. One of those. Nah, they're transient, right? You're either upside down or right side up. Um, so I'm excited to see um, how it plays out. But I do know he already is kind of 
taken charge even more than I thought they would. I didn't know they would, I didn't think they would need to change terminology. I thought Chip would learn Ohio State's terminology, but it sounds like they're kind of t- discussing terminology and all just trying to speak the same language. That doesn't mean they're changing it, but that's one of the hardest things, right? A guy comes in, he's been calling something, he's been a head coach forever. He's been calling stretch, whatever it is, and he comes in and it's called something different. And so it's like, you need a translator to get on the same page when you're talking football. Elks wants to know why Chris won't play me and Madden. Um, I'll tell you, I'll answer that. Because if he gets beat, that's going to be really bad. And I don't think he's scared. Hmm. But I think it's like if he beats you, Elks, it's like, eh, he beat Elks. If you beat him, you're going to be insufferable. And also, he hasn't he hasn't sent me a friend request or anything yet. Oh, well, that's a problem. Yeah, it's just like, you know. Um, thoughts on Brandon Jordan with LJ on the D-line? Yeah, I don't know much. I, I, I did a little research on him. Um, that he's a pass rush specialist, worked with a bunch of NFL guys, kind of as a private coach. I think it's I, I think it's a great analyst hire. People are talking about it, LJ's replacement. Like, I, I gotta see if the guy can coach D-line first. He might, he might know great. That'd be like me being just a fucking route technician coach, but I don't know shit else. <laughs> I don't know how to run a room, I don't know offensive football. I don't know blocking, but I can really crisp up your routes. I don't want that guy as my wideout coach, but might add some value as an analyst. We got like seven more Super Chats hit in that little window. So let's hit a couple of these. Let's hit them. Bree, thank you for the five. Chris tries to hide in his shirt when he's nervous. Love the show. Shout out to all the Menace Army girls. Absolutely. We appreciate the female presence in the Menace Army. Always. Always. Speed, thanks for the five. Uh, the cheaters up north joke. Uh, a, a sign stealer, a pedo, a kingpin walk into a bar. It doesn't matter because hairball, Harbaugh eats all his own boogers. What an embarrassment, OH. Wild. I, I mean, what a wild reality show. Yeah. Now, if they did a spinoff and put actors and stuff in and did, did a show about Michigan football, mm-hmm. I'd tune into that. I would. Way I would. more than the fucking Eli Manning skit. Yeah, I was, I'm going to tune in just for at least an episode or two. Jordan, thanks for the two. Urban ate a booger, too. People forget, though. <laughs> I did hear that. I think Jordan said it to me. Somebody said it to me. I was going to say it, Jordan. DJ, thanks for the five. Leave this. Leave with this in mind for the weekend. Bielema and a big girl smashing <laughs> sounds like a helicopter taking off. Thump, 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 thump. Jesus. What are y'all on today? It's Freaky Friday. They're Menace Army. It's Come on, freak- what do you think? It's the freakiest Friday. I hope all y'all get laid. Um, Billy, thanks for the five. Sw- switch QBs last season. Who wins the game? Who wins the natty? The King Buckeye on Twitter doesn't count calories. Who are they talking to about? I don't know who King Buckeye is. Um, you, you mean if JJ? Oh, Carney- I know who King Buckeye is. Who? Not someone who I think is part of Buckeye. It just hit me. Oh, like not it. Anyways, I think if JJ McCarthy is starting quarterback at Ohio State. They probably win the natty, <laughs> honestly. Facts. I mean, I think if – never mind. I just have another guy. Never, uh, Shane, thanks for the five. Keel, I paid 50 bucks a Super Chat, but will wear a Spiels jersey when Chris flies me up for a live show at Yogi's. Just saying, man. Like, I don't, I don't know how you feel about the bet situation. Yeah, you should pay your bets. There you go. I mean, he'd have been calling you out if you didn't pay up. I mean, shit. Remember, remember I didn't – I wasn't going to shave my eyebrow. Yeah, I wasn't allowing that. Brad, thanks for the five. (laughs) BMS is legit fucking funny. It's good. LMAO, Blue Mountain State. Oh, I need to watch it then. All right, let's get out of here, dude. Hey, went a little long on a Friday. That's all right. It's always good to go a little long on a Friday because you don't have anything to do Saturday. So take your time. Make sweet love. It is a freaky fucking Friday, Menace Army. Enjoy it. Justine and I will be all around the city this weekend. So... Maybe we'll link up. We appreciate you, Menace Army. 